So, um, welcome everyone to the session, this workshop. Uh, we're going to talk about the real time trend trading experiments. This is an academic project that we put together designed to have a strong relationship to the returns of the classic trend trading strategy. Uh, shout out to, I've seen some, several of our traders fall part of the working group members here. Um, special shout out to them, and hopefully they're watching live on the live stream. This was a group that we grew from four of us in K2000, uh, just through group of health. We had over 50 events, averaging around 220 people uh, per event. So I just want to give a little nod to them. But my name is Andrew Strassman. I'm with the Toto Massac Group. The CTA based here in Chicago, well, let's say that is. And I'm a primarily a trend following trader, but my NFA restrictions, you know, I really can't discuss that today. So I'm not going to really be discussing too much about my work. Um, I do have a book on Amazon, seen here. So, you know, feel free to visit the site, but uh, my restrictions regarding to only work with qualified and eligible persons. My origination story and my passion for trading is very easy to go back to when I was about seven years old. Uh, maybe you guys remember the first Pong King came out. Yeah, so Pong uh, grew into asteroids, space invaders. When I um, say I was about 12 or 15 years old, I used to study uh, Pac-Man patterns to try to defeat the game and Donkey Kong patterns. We do the paper route and go to the arcade and patiently wait your turn while the older kids play it. And as I was waiting for my turn, I kind of got an idea of how to defeat the game. That kind of sunk in. Next thing you know, I was better than the big kids. And that was kind of an eye-waking moment. Um, when I was better than the big kids, I kind of knew I had skill. This paid off when I, there was a computer conference in Vancouver in 1983. They launched a new video game, and the high score got to keep the system. So I beat out about six or seven hundred kids on a game that no one had played before. And that's um, how I got my first computer and I started the program. That's cool. You like that? Yeah, and um, do you have a similar story? So, um, next thing you know, I was uh, developing an accounting programs for my parents' small business and the like. But this naturally led to technical trading. And at some point, I thought, the technical trading, I'm sure you guys have seen, I was walking down the hallway, so you've seen a lot of that here today. I thought that stuff was going to make me rich. And growing up in Vancouver, I had a lot of exposure to the Vancouver Stock Exchange. In 1989, Forbes, called, Forbes magazine called it the scam capital of the world. So I learned at a really tender young age, uh, with the equities at least in Vancouver, it wasn't what you knew, it was who you knew. Something I think is kind of rings true with the big boy today, but I shall not digress on that. I realized I had to come to Chicago and work on the floor of the board of trade before it went computerized, just as I had seen happen to the Vancouver Stock Exchange. The first thing I told you on the floor, kid, you gotta read this book, Reminiscences of Stock Robbery. And if my first read of that, uh, I didn't, you know, they didn't really get it yet, because you cannot tell to you that. But I read it, you know, I thought, what do you think? I thought, good book, good book, you know, but you really don't know to read that. I also read Market Wizards. Uh, and my journey began, uh, my black swan moment was probably in 1993, learning the rules for my first hand stars. I'm about to tell you. So, the real time trend trading experiment, every minute, oh, I guess I should talk about this risk disclosure, this risk disclosure statement. We're going to talk about hypothetical trades in and around this talk here. Hypothetical trades aren't worth that much, in my opinion. But when you do have a timestamp, um, and the price of the timestamp, you can't put it together and draw some, some relatively meaningful conclusions. But always be aware of hypotheticals, in my opinion. This is also not investment advice. Trading futures is extremely risky. You will probably lose all your money and then some. Please consult your financial advisor. And in paramount reports, you must do your own homework. There are no shortcuts 
So if you came here thinking I'm going to give you some amazing formulas, I, I, I hate to burst your bubble. Um, the first concept I would like to talk about is this concept of alpha. And on this chart here, we have the benchmark strategy in goal, and then the blue line is some funds performance. When we talk about uh, alpha, alpha is the excess return for the benchmark strategy. So if the golden line is the, the, the goal standard or the metric that we're measuring against, then we can see how this fund is performing. In some cases, it's generating positive alpha, and at some point, it's just a negative alpha. Now the reason I mentioned this, and the reason I'm starting this, our, our talk with this, is because in the hedge fund space, or the equity space, it's very easy to compute alpha. The benchmark would be the S&P 500. So this is a very easy computation. In the CTA space, in the managed future space, in the trend following space, it is a lot more difficult. Because you don't really have one single benchmark. There's so many to choose from. We've got the Barclays CTA index, HFR puts out a whole bunch of sub indices that are great. There's a Sock Chen, C Sock Chen CTA index, ISG Bridge does a good job. So there's all these metrics, and we don't really have one singular benchmark. The problem gets even muddier when you look at the constituents in, in the benchmarks or in, in their computations. Many of these firms are multi-million dollar stocks. At some point, trend trading strategies uh, run into capacity constraints. So almost to a firm, if a firm is over, say, one, two, three billion dollars, they are starting to divest into alternate strategy sets, or to the point where maybe trend is at 25% of their allocation. So I guess what I'm saying is, the benchmarks are now under under allocating or under representing what trend is doing. And we thought that to be a problem. So the goal of our academic projects here was to create a reliable and transparent benchmark for trend activity. The sub goal of this was to educate investors such as yourselves through um, repeated examples. So by the end of this, hopefully you're going to be a trend trading expert, or at least know enough to be dangerous, let's say. Every minute of every trading day for the past five years, we've been assessing the signals of a very simple trend following program, tabulating the results. So with this, we get a very high level of accountability, because we can look back at every single trade from cradle to grain, and know exactly how it performed. And since we're publishing this on an ongoing basis, we're accountable to ourselves and to others. So this is an example here. Um, this is a one minute hypothetical net asset value that we're tracking. And so it's updating every one minute. This is a, a look at all the positions uh, by market sector. And um, then the overall banding graph comparing to uh, that stock chain trend indicator, S&P 500, etc. But we'll come back to that, all that stuff in just a moment. Whether you are a grizzled veteran trader, or maybe you're a new young Turk quant trader, or a student, or maybe you just have a lot of money in the passive investments, this, this academic project is for you. Um, the number one frequently asked question, why the name 40 and 20 have? I assure you by the time we're done here, it will make sense and it will make a whole bunch of sense. Now, the following, uh, I was approached a few years ago by a uh, $6 billion family office here in Chicago. Please don't ask me, I'm not going to tell you, but they had six of their kids, literally their offspring, are juniors and seniors in college. They said, would you mind giving a primer just a basic course of trend following to these kids, or our kids. And I said, of course, we are very close to them. I would be pleased to do So what you're going to see here is an adaptation of that seminar I gave to them. We had a whole afternoon, okay, so I've kind of abbreviated this. I'm going to speed up in some parts, but um, let's just begin. And I said to the kids, well, there's six or eight of us in um, a conference room. 
Okay, just to paint the picture a little bit. And I say to these kids, they go, there are only three things that matter to me. And in order of priority, they are price, price, and price. As a technical trader, uh, there's a strong belief that everything you need to know about markets is embedded within the price. So by analyzing the price over time, you're analyzing everything you possibly need to know about the thing at any given time. Then I say to them, why are you guys here? And I say it's to get the money. And I don't I don't say that to be gauche. I mean, why did you spend a lot of money on your education? To so get the money to provide for your family, maybe you got philanthropic efforts. Bottom line, if you're not making money, you can't keep the lights on. So you're here for one reason, and that is to make money. And I'm not saying that's you know to be again, not to be gauche. Just saying that that's the reality, and that's why we're here. So I go, how are we going to do that? And there's only one way you can do this. You must create actionable works. You have to, at some point, convert your thoughts, dreams, desires, research, you know, gut instinct, everything. Someone, somewhere, is clicking a button and sending an order to send, send sell, buy, sell, X number of shares, contracts of XYZ. So you can't just say, oh, I like the stock market. Then it doesn't work. You need to place an actual order. So I, I said, just don't forget these three things. The only thing that matters are price, price, price. We're here to get the money. When we do that through actual words. Now, I wanted to get their attention really quick. Right out of the shoe. And I wanted to get to know them a little bit better. So I said, okay, guys, you can have this. And then quiz. We just sat down. I'm like, no better time than right now. We're going to have a quiz. And there's only two rules for this quiz. We had a blank piece of paper in front of them. There two, two rules, two instructions. Reaction time is a factor. Keep your answers to yourself. It's the only thing I ask. Okay. I go quick. Choose a number between two and seven. And this is going to take long. I invite you guys to all try this. So pick a number between two and seven. Keep it to yourself. Multiply that number times nine. Now sum the two digits. For example, if you have 34, it would be three plus four equals seven. So everyone's got a number? Subtract five. That new number you have we're going to convert to a letter. 1A, 2B, 3C, etc. Does everybody have their letter? You got your letter? Okay, now think of the country that begins with your letter. So I tell them, no pressure. Everyone haven't got a country? Sure. Sorry. Sorry. So just read you, number between two and seven, multiply by nine, sum the two digits, subtract five, and then use this grid to figure out what your letter is. And then think of a country that begins with your letter. Now take the second letter of your country's name. And think of an animal that begins with that. Here's Noah, he's not real happy with the woodpecker. What pulls this one? Now think of the color of your animal. Now I tell the kids, I go, what I'd like you to do is to draw a blank grid, or a chart. And on one side, we're going to have price, and on the other side, we're going to have time. What I'm going to do is read out a whole bunch of numbers, and then you're going to fill these in like a dot to dot, and we're going to build a chart. And go leave, leave room for about 80 data points or so. Just go left or right. And go, does that seem clear? I mean, it's pretty clear. That's, I'm very light on instruction here. But they say, yeah, that seems clear. I go, 
Anyone have any questions? No questions? Great. Let's get it out of here. Oh, wait, I've got a question. What is a great elephant doing in Denmark? Okay, their heads just exploded. And while their heads are exploding, I go, <laughs> they're like, they say, what happened? I go, I am in your head, okay? So you better listen up. Because I got some stuff to say. Now, by way of getting to know these kids, I go around the room, and there's, we have the, these different bunches of numbers here. You know, group number one, group number two, et cetera. And I want to get to know them a little bit better so we can have a one-on-one. -on -one. So I say this to the first fellow. I go, Joe, Joe, right? Joe, Bob, can you please read this first number, batch of numbers, and everyone else follow along with your dot to dot, your little plot chart here, and tell us something interesting about yourself. So Joe goes ahead and you know he likes the cross and he tell us you and you know we do the numbers 11, 12, plus 7, 10. And in this in this form we're not gonna actually do this, but hopefully you can like, they're they're doing their little line, they're going across, and we go to the second batch and I get to know Bob and Susie. We go through these batches. Then um, I cut it, I continue, I get to know the whole group. And a little bit, I know more about them now than I do. Which is good. Then uh, I say, what is, what's the secret to trading, by the way? Do you guys know it? I mean, when I meet someone on the street and they say, what do you do? I'm a trader. They go, ah, this is one thing they always say. And uh, can you anyone guess what that is? What's that? Okay, they, the one thing I get most often. They say, oh, you trade? Buy low, sell high. <laughs> Buy low, sell high. Okay. Yeah, you hear that a lot? Yeah. You're right. Okay. You're, you're kind of right. How about this? You're exactly you're half right. I try to tell them you're half right. They go half right. I'm like, well, it takes a while. But the idea is buy low, sell high. Now, the issue here, and here's this chart, you know, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high. The issue is never has anybody that they need to buy the low and sell the high. I think this is what they get the most of the problem. But conceptually, yeah, you want to, you want to make a profit, you want to buy it here and then sell it higher. Um, I go, so, yeah, buy the sell high is kind of right. I go, this your chart should look something like this. Now. And if they follow along and develop plots, I, I tell them, this is actual data from a real stock. Give it at a time frame. And I go, I'm not making this stuff up. This is real data that you guys have bought. And I, I go around the room, I see how everyone's doing. Does it look anything like this? It looks something like this. And you know, it, it, things are doing a reasonably good job. I go, well, today's your lucky day. You bought that low where it's green down there. I say, you're all you're all on for me. Congratulations. Get bought. Love. I go, who wants to sell it at point A? And take a problem. Give me free money. So, if, who wants to sell point A? Anyone want to take the free money? You have the free money? You have the free money. You got the free money. You know, free money? You like free money? You know, they say, you don't go broke, take any profit, right? So, typically half the room has taken the profit. I go, congratulations in advance, in your house. You're not quite rich, but uh, I guess your family seems to be doing pretty good, so I think you're, you're going to make it. So, all right, we go on. I go, I'm going to read the next bunch of numbers, okay? I'm going to read them a little quicker, okay? But I'm going to read them. I want you all to focus on drawing the main points. And I go, 26, 30, 31, 37, 40, 47, 50. And I rattle them off pretty quickly, and they're having a little bit of troubles keeping up. And I kind of wander around, around the room, and I take a little pause and see how they're doing. And they're doing okay. I'm like, all right, this next bat is coming kind of fast and furious. I'm going to let you have this stuff. Okay, are you guys ready? Are you really ready? You know, we're ready. All right, here we go 49, 40, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, it's too fast, you went too fast. I ran out of paper. You ran out of paper, that's interesting. 
And it was too fast, that too was interesting. And here's the thing about markets and trading, okay? Um, it's not a turn-based game like Sorry or Yahtzee. They don't wait for you to make the next choice. These markets are coming, and they're coming every minute of every day, with or without your participation. So you better have a plan of attack, you better be ready. And I gave you guys a warning, I said they're coming, right? So, the point is, we're now at a higher number, right? And here's, uh, I took, I thought this one was pretty funny. The fella ran out on the top. On this chart here, he ran out on the top side and was going off onto the table. So, quickly thinking, he did a continuation chart on the bottom to append to it. Other guys grab another piece of paper, so they've got two pieces of paper, and they're, they're complaining. They're like, that's not fair. Oh, that's not fair. It's just, what do you mean that's not fair? You didn't give us the scale ahead of time. Oh, I didn't give you scale ahead of time. There's a time you say. Like, there's no scale in the real world. We don't know what stuff is going to do. You know, just because, yeah, I just, I didn't know where to start. So the point is this, what defines high? So here we are, half the guys have punched out of point A. We're now at point B. Of those remaining, you know, that's a high number. Right? By those saw high, that's a high number. And I remind them, this is actual data that they're plotting about. This. I'll be in my hands. But this is actual data. So of the people who didn't get raised their hand, who wants to sell it at point B? Dun, dun, dun. Congratulations in advance on your profits. And for more profits. Because you didn't sell it at point A, but you did sell it at point B. Is there anyone remaining that wants to hold on and see the next? We got three. We got a few contestants remaining. All right. Let's see what happens next. It went to C. All right, of you three, who wants to sell at point C? We've got three, okay. We still got one or two remaining here. Well, good news, because it went to D. All right, well now, all right. Is there anyone left to sell at D? Now we can let them have it, right? All right, good. Let's move on. Oh wait, they went to E. So, for those of you who sold at point A, it was too soon. Same thing with B. Same thing with C, and same same thing with D. In fact, you could argue the real move hadn't even happened yet at point B. So that happened. Dang it. Point is, perspective is everything. And these moves seem to be, you know, always obvious given the beneficial perspective of points. You know, the would have, could have, should At this point, I say to the kids, I go, I'll give you a from the half there. Try and plug it in for you. Yeah, let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. I hate windows <laughs> now. That's true. The loose unit of death in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, I have to stop on that. Okay. I was excited about it. Point E. All right, they had it for a second. Technical difficulties. There we go. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, I'm going to be careful with the words. So, moves are always obvious in the beneficial perspective of hindsight. 
But you know, I live in the real world. So all these kids, a lot of you do it for five dollars. So I have a gift card right now and some of the stock items. But in this case today, for you kind of folks, we're able to 70 degree uh, summer weather. How do you do the top of the book? You can name that stock that we were just looking at. You get one guess. Tim, you click this after the presentation. Apple. Yes, it was Apple. Good job. I got Amazon. It was a good guess. Um, but yeah, that was Apple. And Apple is, you know, something of a unique case. Uh, you, what did you say? Steve Jobs, um, Microsoft with the uh, blue screen like that. Hey, you must be tech. When you pull out the charts, I don't care what system you're using. There are six of them out there today to choose from. The default setting, when you pull up the chart, they'll take the minimum and the maximum. They'll compute a scale to center it for your viewing pleasure. So there's a default view of Apple. It's taking the lowest, the highest, setting a scale, centering it for your viewing pleasure because they think this is how you would like to see it. But I am telling you, I think they're doing a disservice because um, we don't know what the scale is. And you need something to go on. I understand the programming part of it, but um, I'm just telling you now, beware. Just because there's a high and low doesn't mean it has to stop on either side. This is how I look at it. This is a trend trader's view for the and Oh, I got to speak to the debt there in just a bit. Okay. Um, there are three phases of water, right? Solids, liquids, and gas. Do you guys, do you guys know what the three phases are for prices? Oh, long, flat, short. You know, at the risk of sounding obvious, things go up, down, and sideways. So that's important to know because when I look back at this chart, Maybe you can see if, if you were long on this green, and if you were short or anticipating lower prices when it was red, and you know what I did when it was flat, I just didn't even bother drawing it. It was just a little noisy. It was why bother. So on this chart here, um, we're going to construct this chart. And hopefully you can see you can make my going up, going down, and markets travel in both directions. Why not? Why not? Is that on so when we talk about um, deriving alpha from, from trading models, there's two schools of thought. There's one that's like price driven, uh, like I am, or technical traders might be. The school of thought is fundamentally driven. Like think about a book or or something who's looking at dividend yield and quality of stocks and all that. But let's take the price. Um, in when you're looking at prices, you could be trend based or you could use like a newer version. Um, Counting on things that going back to where they came and so on. So let's take the trend. Um, and you know, we're trading liquid in liquid things, directional bets over a short, medium, and long, hopefully a long time frame. You broadly put strategies into two categories. One would be convex, meaning I want something to happen, or a concave, I don't want anything to happen. And if you guys are a student of uh, betting strategies, you, know, there's, you might draw parallels to like a Montingale strategy um, or a Broca strategy, but let's just skip that for now. Why, why, you talk, why would you add trend strategy to your portfolio? In modern portfolio theory, the idea is that if you increase uh, your portfolio, if you add to your portfolio lowly correlated instruments, you will tend to increase your returns and lower risk. So that's why we're in the of trend in the first place. Now, it's true that the last five to 10 years have been horrific for trend strategies. And yet, we think we know why. Um, on this chart, um, my friend Dimitri uh, put together, what we overlaid here is um, the purple line is the growth of the Fed's balance sheet inverted. And the red line is the growth of the ECB's balance sheet inverted. <laughs> and it was an amazingly strong statistical, statistical, um, statistical statistics of 
It explains all the other in the stock market, and that's all of the most recent down to the past years in CTA or Translash. I think this isn't happening if they've been keeping a lid on volatility. So if you had a context strategy, want things to happen, they said no moss, they kept a lid on it and prevented things that might have happened in the past. Anyway, we suspect that's what has been happening. I thought I'd mention it. Trend, this is the background of trend trading. Now, this is a great story. If you've heard it, um, you're going to remember this. And if you haven't heard it yet, you should definitely know this. These two successful traders have been done. Are great traders born with a killer instinct, like his lioness here, or can they be taught? There's an episode of The Simpsons when Homer hit his head with a killer genius. <laughs> So they put an ad in the Wall Street Journal of Barons. They got something like 10 or 20,000 applicants. They were looking for apprentice traders. From these, these 10 to 20,000 applicants, they were all given uh, a, a true false entrance exam. And you can take this entrance exam on our website. They selected a bunch of candidates who had some of the uh, characteristics they were looking for. They picked 10 out of 10,000. They invited them to come to Chicago for a three-week training seminar. They coached them up on methods that we're going to discuss and gave them a couple hundred thousand dollars to trade and sent them on their way. After six months to a year, they came back and some people bowed out of the program, but the ones that they exhibited, you know, strong character and discipline, they funded with millions of dollars to trade. You read about the story of the turtles and any of these fine books. In fact, the rules that they were taught are kind of now in the domain. It's one Google search away. It's just Google original turtle training rules, and you can read all about it. Now, this stuff was sort of secrecy for a long time, and I have uh, heard from uh, a first-hand source back in 93 about the significance of this. It was enough to trigger my interest and my investigation, and that was my black swan moment. The reason this is important is because of all the CTA firms out there, many to most of them might be classified in the trend bucket. And there's a whole bunch of names out here managing billions of dollars. Most many of these were offspring of that program, or at the very bare minimum, are well versed in these strategies. If not using them, they certainly know all of them. So the key concepts, I'm amazed at how many people who did in the business tell me that can't answer this question. What is a trend? It's simple, higher highs, higher lows. You see from this chart here, the chart of the Moon S&P, an old one from 2013, that makes a high, makes a higher low, a higher high, higher low, and this soft tooth pattern is really out. That, my friends, is a trend. That is the definition of a trend. Higher highs, higher lows, no more, no less. That is what the trend is. Now, this also works in reverse. This is a downtrend mark. Now, I'm kind of a sneaky fellow. I'll say to someone, would you want to be long that? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. I'd like to be long. Would you like to be short that? Yeah, lukewarm, not best. I go, since I'm a sneaky guy, all I do is encourage my use trouble. You may have a built in bias to be a predilection to just be long. That's no good. Markets go up, markets go down. Of course, markets have different behavior. Um, when I'm on a short, it's something at two cents, for example, the same way you would have upside. But markets go up, markets still go down. That's the definition of trend and a downtrend. The other thing we've identified that most people get largely wrong is their ego. And everyone wants to be right. Who doesn't? Big fan of being right. But being right in it comes to trading is highly overrated. Here is a case of seven users in a row. Not great, right? Seven users. Not wonderful, but I've got three winners. Those three winners more than make up those losses incurred. So two of those guys can pay for all of those other losses, and the one big winner, that's all profit daily. So here's an example of being right 30% of the time, and you can make money. Here's another look. If I were to chart this here's a sawtooth pattern lower, Loss, 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 loss. Very annoying because the losses are small and contained. Add to that three winners, and you're allowed to naturally reach the terminus, and you end up getting you know, something that looks like this when you add it all up. That, my friends, is how trend following works. 
small losses, free to find, taken graciously as a cost of business, and eventually you unearth those a few very good trades which you pay either way. So how it's supposed to work. Here's a, um, from all of our trades over the last five years, we've done the scatter plot, scatter plot here. The losers are in red, we've got these green winners here. Now, if I, if I were to do a cumulative function on this, we're left with those. That is 100% profit. And you see the big, the big outsized profits? That's where you're making the money. Um, on average, this thing's making like six basis points per day. There's another business that makes a lot like that. And that's called a consider. Consider the owner of the house, though, not the guy that's going in late and going to the cash station. Wouldn't it be nice to be the house? It's kind of how Trendline works and it's supposed to work. Um, so we talk about efficient markets. In the 1980s, these entomologists didn't like experiment with food. At the end of two and three quarters, they had um, two piles of food equal and constantly replenished. So they said to themselves, um, well, it's a 50 50. You guys agree with that? Like, they're half the time they're going to go down in the first site A and half the time they're going to go to site B. Seems like a reasonable hypothesis, which then goes to the test. Now, what happens? Most of the time, they answer at one pile, then with little to no warning, most of the answer is the other pile. I'm not too sure why. But when we talk about efficient markets and rational, you know, rational responses and rational that, you know, they just don't exist. People are irrational. They're driven by fear and greed and a whole bunch of other things. In his book, Soros, um, in his book, he stay ahead of George George Soros says, these are the seven key stages of a moving bus pattern. In the first part, the trend is not recognized as such. It goes through the initial phase, it accelerates, it's, it, it overcomes some tests. Um, the, I'm trying to speed up here, so um, <laughs> it gets some tests, it survives the test, it reproduces strength, it accelerates, it hits a uh, moment of truth, it twilights, occasionally it crosses over, it generates a movement in the opposite direction, also knows a crash. Smart people do dumb things. Um, this was just from June. Check this out. I saw this in the newspaper in the Wall Street Journal. I had to. I had to think no. Um, these are predictions going out over one year, two year, for ten year yields by the streets. Top, top, tip top people, economists. Where would yields be? They asked. And so you see, um, those two red bars show what their projections were. Well, how did they do? Land. Not even in the ballpark. The point is, smart people do dumb things all the time. Listen to prices, they will tell you the story. Speaking of smart people, Sir Isaac Newton lost a fortune in the South Sea bubble. He invested a bit of money, he took the profit, he was pretty happy. Meanwhile, his friends got rich, he couldn't take it anymore, so he ran into sort of a sizable position. And then the thing cratered on him and he exited the road. I can calculate the movement of the stars, but not the madness of men. Perhaps he should have sat in at Trader's Expo Chicago and he would have a leg up. So, just to quickly review markets go up, markets go down, why don't you go and have fun? Calling tops and bottoms is tough. Being right is overrated. I am merely a member of the herd, and smart people do bad things. Yes, sir. When you mentioned all the new losses you might take to make the big comeback and the big gain, uh, how much is it in each trade? How much is the percentage? Let's do this right now. I'm going to ask that question. If you're going to run a trading system, there are a few minimum requirements you must have. You need to figure out why you're going to trade. You need to figure out how much risk, sir, you're going to risk on every trade. You need a rule to get in. You need a rule to get out of the loss. You need a rule to get out of the profit. You know, in the case of futures, we need some sort of rule to roll our position over to the next contract month. Those are the minimum requirements. Now, if you start to get a little fancier, more advanced, we can talk about doing add ons or pyramid or profit taking. Um, you can do some sort of overlay risk controls at trade level or at portfolio level. You know, maybe you want to take little fail trades or reversals. Um, maybe you want to adapt with the market environment. These are all questions I have no answer. Our project, when we started this, should fit on the back of an envelope. And it does. 
I can't remember who said it, but simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. The art before the internet of trading is fit one another. This is what we're trading. It's all the um, it's all the, the U.S. domestic heavily traded guys who are probably familiar with everything from interest rates and equities, foreign exchange metals, energy grades, soft and uh, lifestyle. This is a key concept. If nothing else that you need to take away from today. Um, you may have heard of the uh, technical indicator called the average true range. What this is simply is that from, if you take the high minus the low, that gives you the range on the day. If you take the high and low every day and computed an average over some period of days, well, that's basically your average true range. Now, you might adjust if a stock or something has a gap move, that needs a little slight adjustment, but just for you know, for for our purposes, it's the expected daily range from high to low. We think that they might trade on any given day. That's average range. We use this in two places. First is for determining our initial protective stop on any trade. Second, we use it for calculating what we call volatility adjusted movement. Now, as the market gets more volatile, that number will tend to increase. Or decrease if the market starts to consolidate and, and pinch in when you look. I will put this chart. Um, so, this is a chart of copper from a long time ago. On the sub chart is the average true range. It's that blue mystic grid, it's not a square, the blue line on the sub chart. Um, it had a range of two and a half cents way back when. Then we drew an arrow to the second box, hopefully, you can see where it now has a range of five and a half cents. So during this time, we can say the average true range of copper has a double. That would be a true state. So this part can get a little dicey, but I think you can handle it. When we were trying to decide what we're going to use for the benchmark, we want to balance uh, used by institutions with used by individuals. So we settled on was an account size of $5 million. That's a lot of money to most people. It's a deck chair of the Q2 for others, okay? So we said $5 million just to give us a starting point. Um, and so there you go. We're risking $5 million. Sir, we're risking 50 basis points on any trade. Now, we know from experience, this is about twice as frothy from reality. But uh, we'll get back to that. Soon. So five million percent fifty percent or fifty basis points. Five million times 0 0.50 percent or fifty bits gives us twenty five thousand dollars of risk capital on every trade. Now we take that number and we put it in that budget box. So that twenty five thousand. That's twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. I'm sorry. Let's focus on U.S., which is of course the thirty year Treasury bond. At this moment in time, it had an average true edge of 1.20 big points. It's a one and a quarter points more or less. The tick value for, for big points, a thousand bucks. We know that from our handy dandy commodity symbol graph, which equates to about 12, it is, it creates exactly twelve hundred dollars of risk. So there's the point value per uh, dollar um, dollar value per big point. That's what it works out to. So 25,000 divided by 1,200 would yield 20.8 contracts if we got a signal in a 30 year bond for this account. Does that make sense? Is that good? Okay, if we were in a small environment, if you're watching this on video, you wouldn't talk about anything about that. So here's the question gold has an ATR of 19. Three. Well, we know it's hundred dollars per point value. It equates to nineteen thirty per contract. Twenty five thousand divided by nineteen thirty, we can do twelve point nine five contracts. Now you must either truncate to twelve or round up to thirteen. Pick up. But that's how we're able. This is what we call volatility adjusted unit size. As the market gets more volatile, the ATR is going to go up and reduce the number of contracts we trade to account for this new large asset risk. This way, also, key point, we can make every single bet we take 
in the center the advance yen for what we don't want to do is have outsized bets on the offer. We want to make sure every bet is the same everywhere we go. Otherwise, we're going to get some asymmetric results there. We actually have a website, a calculator, showing what the ATR is, the 40 day high, 40 day low. Um, so, but I got to speed this up or we're going to run out of time here. The initiation. In the narrow market, when prices are not getting anywhere to speak up but move within a narrow range, there's no sense of trying to anticipate what the next big movement is going to be up or down. So says Jesse Livermore in reminiscences of a stock operator. That book they told me to read when I first arrived in Chicago. It, it didn't make much sense the first time. Now I'm really close. So what we're looking for is the market to go sideways. And I like to tell people, I say, um, I say, did you ever remember the jack in box as a kid? You wind the thing up. The longer you wind the thing up, in my opinion, the more potential kinetic energy becomes stored, which, when released, yields a bigger move. At least in my opinion. So, here's what we're going to do. Remember, we trade both sides of the long and short. Um, you, know, here, you might hear people talk about support and resistance. The draft support resistance line that always cracks me up because to me it's an opportunity line. If we went below the lowest low in the last 40 days, so here's the highest high in blue of the last 40 days, the lowest low the last 40 days in red. Does everyone see that? When it goes pierces that red line, we're getting short. We're initiating a new short position. We don't have any contracts. We don't know how much we're risking. We're risking an ACR. We don't have any contracts. We're just waiting for the thing to happen. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, can't, I can't choose the timing of the battle, but I can choose the place and the size of the battle. So first of all, we're controlling the things that we can control. And that's the core principle of Trendform. So that's a short the beginning initiated. This is where I want to be getting this shit. This is the mirror image. It's where I get long. Right and short. Now, you're in the trade. So what? Uh, well, here we go. Um, this thing got long here. We put a protective sell stop against the position. One ATR lower from our initial. So if the market is trading, doesn't seem to win today, if it rolls, rolls over and plays dead, you know what? I'm out. So I, I mean, I don't not care, but I kind of ended one. Because it's an acceptable small loss, getting me that much closer to the big win. And as I know, 30% winners is okay. What if the thing is a winner? Oh, just another Jesse Livermore quote. A loss never bothers me after I take it. I forget it overnight. But being wrong, not taking that loss, that is what damages the pocketbook and the soul. True, you know, people instead of fearing, um, okay, well, you have to reverse this natural deep seated instincts. People, when they have a loser, they hope that it turns into a winner. When they're on a winner, they fear that all their profits are going to be gone the next day. You need to completely invert that mentality. When you have a loss, you have to fear that the loss is going to get, get bigger, and you can take care of that immediately by getting up. When you have a winner, you have to hope that it becomes a bigger winner. So you must invert those deep-seated natural instincts, and it is not easy. I will tell you that. So in the case of the winning trade, this thing started to go higher. It marched up, and what we're going to use now, we use the 40-day high to get in this trade. We're going to use the lowest low on the last 20 days to liquidate this position. Remember the trend, what is the trend? Higher highs, higher lows. If it makes a new low, I'm getting up. So this is a dynamic trailing stock. And after a certain amount of time that this has been a winning trade, and you stuck with it, and you had a resting GTC cell stock against it, at some point that thing marches up. And at some point, hopefully it marches up again. And you're going to keep marching out, and I guarantee you at some point it is going to move. Because at some point, things are going to stall out. Maybe it will roll over the other way. 
doesn't matter. What you're doing is marching that protective dynamic showing a soft higher. And that's how you're able to hang on to the mirrors. And you're, you're able to hope for this trait to kind of bigger than the trait. So, trading rules. Initial risk of 50 basis points of a $5 million account size of $25,000. We're, we're risking one 20 day ATR. And by the way, you guys, if you go onto our site later um, and sign up for you, you, you can get all this stuff. Uh, we'll get long over the highest high of the last 40 days, or a short a little the lowest of the last 40 days. And when in the position, we'll use a dynamic 20 day lowest or lowest highest high to trail the stock. So 40 days to get in the trade, 20 days to get out. Hence why we call it 40 days to get out. I guarantee you people would understand it, it would now make sense. Hopefully it makes sense. Here are a few example trades, okay? This was today. This happened just today. This is getting short to your own currency. This could be a big trade. I mean, I don't know, but yeah, nobody knows. Maybe I'm not even going to speculate um, whether it's going to happen with Brexit or anything like that. But I can tell you, there's been a series of small losses recently. Now, if I go down, how about this trade? I was short this thing 200 days back in 2014. So I drew this big uh, box around um, where you got short. And if you can see that little orange line that's going lower, that's your protective self buy stop on the short position. And as you can see, that was a monster winner. Another monster around that same time was getting short and crude. Now, the interesting thing about that was there was a couple of false starts there. But when you got short at 92 bucks, it cascaded lower, you know, down into the 30s, 40s there. So that was another monster that really you could. Um, but you know, I'm probably show you more losing trades. Uh, I mean, I can't, I mean, if you make money like 30, 40% of the time, there's certainly a lot of bad examples that we just don't have time for. You may have heard of cryptocurrencies. Here it is. Um, I'm, this is using a uh, system trading view, which I think you guys might check out. It's a pretty good system to, to use. So I've drawn the background green, went long, red, went short, and left the white with no position. Here's a bit of a closer view. It broke out in, on April 1st over 4100, and just uh, just last week it took out the 20 day low. So you could have been long from 4100, liquidated 9200, and flat reset. And now you'd be looking for a breakout of the 14,000 to initiate a new on, or you'd be looking to maybe go short for a second. This is uh, the, the back test uh, going back from 2013. Now, I remember I'm, I'm having this room with these kids, right? And I tell them, these are things you're going to want to investigate. Okay, 40 day breakout, there's no magic about that. The original external, external rules. Had system one was a 20 day breakout, and system two was a 50 day breakout. So 40 was something you can It's two months. It's a good benchmark. It's a good benchmark, which is why we're doing this. And you can plug that into your back set test system and check it out and see what actually works better or all. So it takes the best here from the add-ons or no add-ons, add-ons. No matter shorter look back and shorter longer. Tight stop. There is half an, an ATR, maybe almost three ATRs. Give yourself a wide berth. Yeah, you know, I would say it's like a uh, garden. You, can, you can give it some water and some sunlight and watch your garden grow. So think of it that way. So give it a tech stock or a far stock. These are all things to investigate. You can just filter through moving averages. Breakout trend falling is one way of trend falling. Moving average crossover system is yet another way of trend falling. Um, but you gotta love doing this research. And the research breeds confidence because um, results find that I know a thousand things that don't work. So even when you come, you know, you check things out, it doesn't work, it's not useless information. It's just something that didn't work or didn't work on that instrument or didn't work on that instrument in that period. And the flip side of that is uh, curve fitting and, and what's up. But we have a website. Um, please check it out, www.4020.com. Here's a couple of examples. Um, 
Uh, we've got a, a, a Android app. This you like. I took a $30 Raspberry Pi computer, a little Linux computer, and stuck it in this cigar box. And I'm using the Twitter search API. When, when certain tweets come out from certain originators, it spits it out. And when we get a trade from the 48 out model, it spits it out. So I'm pulling from a couple of different sources. And what I did was I took this 100 year old piece of barn timber. And I put this thermal printer right into it. And I put my monitors on it. And that's been a very useful tool. It was a presidential tweet or something. Now, I'm not going to act on it, right? Because I already have my system in place. It sure is helpful to know what's going on in the world. Or just turn it off and don't even worry about it. Last couple thoughts here. How would trend follower have traded Mr. Ivan Newton's portfolio? Okay, and we know he, he grew up and he got pretty upset with the world, but um, yeah, I think you can see now maybe um, a simple trend follower gets long when you get getting out, he's asking why. You know, they're busy playing ping pong. I never made more money than did the city on the hands, comes to mind. And then eventually, you know, if you roll over and then get up, you could have actually got a move in the opposite direction and gone short. You got to come and get going instead of the website. Um, why would you want to sign up for our academic project? Get these real time alerts, complete transparency. Uh, you're going to learn through um, repetition and observation how trend works. It's a good comparison tool against your other investments. You're going to learn the techniques. Um, I, this is some, there's some free tools out there. Is so anyone use R or Quantum? Okay, there's some free tools out there that are pretty powerful. Um, and you now we have to really go into that. One thing people have been asking for, and we have the data, we built it, we just have another really reason to do it, is they care more about stocks than futures. So we have a portfolio of the top. Thirty large cap stocks. I think there's a lot more interest in that than there is in all the fixed income products. Um, this is a that's Apple right there. Hey, do you guys remember December? Yeah, I got the mouse right there. How about that short? Right from there. Uh, Twitter.com slash forty eight twenty out. I was talking about this trade right here. That thing cascaded lower. You could have been short for all that. You could have been long for this bit. And yet you want to be long again. Which is fine. As long as you are mindful of that technical type of stock. And I have no idea what that was going to be. But I just I know I don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of nice people on the TV that play this um, Amazon. Oh, Netflix is getting the hammer. All right, so here's where to follow up and reach out. Um, the website is 40 and 20 um, Take a quiz if you're interested. The true false entrance exam using the original Turtle program. Find out how you rate. It might be an interesting experiment. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, there's my networking group and my CTA. Uh, 